Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. So we ended up getting a whole bunch more bull follow through all over the place with XLF and IWM continuing to lead the way to the upside. We've now created a whole bunch of space for the bulls to work with, but we're going to be scouting bearish in the short term to be looking for temporary tops of the bounces to be set and then daily consolidation for us to be scouting higher lows. We're going to check in on a bunch of the setups that we've been watching over the past week. As we wrap up the week, let's check out the charts. So the S&P 500 on the daily with very significant follow through. And at this point with where we close today, just doing a little bit of measuring, how far are we before the all time high? We're looking at about 2.1 or 2.2%. And from where we stand back down to the low 3.4%. So we have bounced more than a 50% retracement. And again, I'm measuring on the S&P 500 futures because SPY had a dividend distribution and that is an artificial change in price and that impacts the chart. So here's the bounce, 65 plus percent retracement. What does that mean? It means the next most likely scenario when we top out of this bounce, wherever it is, is to be looking for a daily higher low to be a result of that top out. I've been watching the hourly EMA 12 support on the way up. We've been holding it time and time again, back test, second hold, third hold, fourth hold, and still holding it here at the end of today. We did sell off a little bit into the close, but still up over 1.2% for SPY on the day. And once we lose this hourly uptrend, we will zoom out and that will likely be shaping up the start of some more significant consolidation. So if I'm a bear and if I'm all cash, I wanna see a gap up open tomorrow everywhere. I wanna see everything as extended as possible for me to be scouting a short for daily consolidation to begin. But again, it's a big win today for the bulls because they're alleviating that concern. Yesterday, could this be a bear flag? Is this a big enough retracement? That question's out the window now. It's a very significant retracement and the bulls have been proving themselves. If we're looking at the NASDAQ, it has not been the bounce leader. And that is important to note. And we have our move from the low. Nope, I wanna measure it the other way. Our move back down, we would need a 3.3% drop to get to the low and we need 2.4% to get to the high. And if we're looking at our retracement, it's about 61%. So a little bit less than the S&P 500. And it's been weaker these last two days. Still a solid bounce, still filling the gap, but it's not big tech leading the way up. It's the financial sector. So we've been organizing our brains with these sectors and who correlates to who. And we know it's QQQ and tech and SMH. Semiconductors generally on one side. Semiconductors are outperforming QQQ and big tech on this bounce, they're looking back up at the all time high. And this was one of the charts that we looked at that was still very healthy on the weekly with the uptrend, but they're all on one side. And with XLF, we're looking at IWM, whose largest holding sector wise is the financial sector. And then we're looking at all of our reopening plays that have been correlating with XLF since the COVID lows. And I'm talking the airliners, the cruises, oil names, gambling, casino, hotels. They're all having really solid days. Here's H. And they're all having really solid moves here. RCL, potential rising wedge with a bull break. We had a double top that broke yesterday and very notable follow through today, convincingly getting over that level. And the airliners, remember we looked at our weekly equilibriums. Recently I did in one of these videos, key weekly tightening ranges to be watching and the airlines were one of them. And Jets has broken bullish from its equilibrium where we had our low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low. And now we have broken bullish with a very significant two day move breaking out. The other names that we were watching on weekly tightening ranges were TAN, the solar sector, which is still real tight, working on a weekly higher low and ARKK, more a growth name here. And it is tightening up as well. So still worth keeping an eye on those, but the airliner is already getting their bull break. And it's because XLF just had an absolute monster bounce. We went 6% in four days from the low of this drop. And again, tons of space for a daily higher low to form next time we top out. There was a clear top fishing play today. Look at all this resistance, 38.28, 38.22, 38.19. We hit 38.20 and then that was our temporary top. Granted, it's only very minimal hourly consolidation at this point, but when you're this extended with the hourly RSI over 80, and you're entering a range with just a, a wall of resistance, a resistant zone, that's a good area to be scouting a potential top fish. So we'll see. Again, if you look at bearish and you're not in a position, you want gap up opens tomorrow. 
IWM, very notable bounce. It's one of the names we're scouting for a weekly higher low. And bigger picture, it's one of the names we're watching to see, can this monthly time frame resolve itself in all-time highs? It's going to be two very different scenarios here because, again, IWM is growth names and risk on assets, risk on stocks. You can see these lower wicks. You can see the monthly EMA is, is catching up, EMA 12. And you can see that we've been trading for seven months in this range. And we're either going to get a bull break to all-time highs or a bear break, which would be very notable for me. So it could be a bull flag. This is the two-month time frame. Just very brief pullback. Let's see if we can get follow-through. We will still need to change daily trends on these names that are coming off the drop. Yes, it's a big-time move. Yes, there's tons of space for a higher low. But we will need that higher low and higher high for the bulls to prove that they have resumed the uptrend. MJ Sector, topping out here today, it looks like. We've bounced double-digit percentages over the past few days. And we're in a very prolonged downtrend. So not surprising at all that we see some profit taking. And I'm going to do a video over the weekend, a little bit more in depth with the MJ sector, but a lot more proving needs to be done. Yes, it was a nice you know, two-day bull move, but we need a lot more. And I'll explain exactly what we need over that weekend video, thinking bigger picture about the sector. The dollar did reject from our 93.73 resistance, but it's still battling around here. And you can see we broke the low of yesterday, but just barely, it's pretty much a double bottom. And so if we're going to convincingly reject here, bears now need to control the next couple of days. We need to confirm a four-hour downtrend. So we need to set a lower high on a bounce and drop to a lower low. That would be more clear daily consolidation taking place, a more convincing rejection from weekly resistance, and then we would just be tightening up. And at that point, I would be viewing it as a low, high, higher low, and lower high, almost a double top. But we have to confirm a four-hour downtrend if we're going to be looking for, if we're going to be calling it a weekly lower high. Metals are weak. The dollar, daily lower high set and already dropping to a lower low. We know we're scouting a weekly higher low here, but there's no sign of it. Still a lot of space for it, but we're now retracing a significant enough amount where we're just going to be looking for an equilibrium on the weekly and not favoring continuation just yet. Before we were looking, is this going to be an inverse head and shoulders? But because we've retraced 60% plus, we're now going to be looking for an equilibrium if the bulls can give us a weekly higher low. But again, there's no sign of that weekly higher low as we just dropped to a lower low. So bears still have some momentum in these metals and silver is weaker than gold and it's a potential daily bear flag. It's an inside bar at the moment, but if the inside bar breaks bear tomorrow, then we're looking right back down at that low and that's a key double bottom because there's a lack of support down here after that level. 2189, 2166, and then nothing. And again, I exited my longer term. You know, I held these metals swing positions for as long as I can remember. I generally don't hold that long, but I exited when the monthly downtrend was confirmed on silver. And again, I can't stress enough as a trader, the number one way to be patient is to obviously be practicing patience throughout your entire life because it translates over into trading, but to not care if you miss a move. When you have the realization of how big picture this is and how long a game we're playing over decades and you give up the attachment of missing a move. So for me exiting, you know, I exited these medals positions and then we bounced for a solid couple weeks. And I thought, oh man, did I just exit right at the bottom? And the answer was maybe, but here we are back down at and lower than where I sold. And again, patience, because the bulls did not prove anything on the weekly time frame. We did not confirm trend changes. And that still has to be done if I'm going to be looking back bullish on these metals. Natural gas daily bounce underway. So we were looking for it. I was looking for it yesterday and we didn't get it. And we got it today with the inside bar bull break. Generally, we don't get as clean a signal here in natural gas as we got but just a crystal clear four-hour confirmed trend change with solid follow-through. And for UNG, that follow-through was 1704, and here we are up at 1759, so a solid couple percent move to the upside, but we're not going to lose sight that we're now just scouting a daily lower high in natural gas. Look at how much space we have to work with. A lot. And the question is, what retracement do we see from here? 
Can we see a 50% retracement to favor an equilibrium? Or do we see a 38% retracement to favor a potential bear flag? And again, watch the FIB retracement video. I'm talking about FIB so much more because I finally realized it's so much easier for me to explain things in FIBs. I used to you know, do my analysis and just say that you know, the most likely scenario is a daily lower high at this point and not really explain much further because I didn't have any way to quantify it. And it was just by the look of things. I've looked at 10,000 charts and I know that we have not bounced enough to anticipate an equilibrium at this point, but it's the FIBs that allow us to quantify and it's a lot more organized when you have that number to be going off of. All right, you'll see the plants have migrated inside for the winter and I'm wearing a sweater. It's very quickly becoming fall. Seasons changing. I'm going to be away for the weekend, but I will see you soon next week. I will put out that MJ video over the weekend. Have a good rest of your day and do good things.